Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. And today, I'm going to nail shut what is, for me, a very old coffin. The question of whether there will be games in heaven. This is one that's plagued me since I was a very small boy, so I'm happy to put an end to it. In doing so, this will prove a couple of other things as well. First, if there are games in heaven, there is also play, because playing is what people do with games. Likewise, you can't have playing without some sort of game to play. Secondly, if there is play in heaven, it proves that heaven contains things that could be described as toys. When my dad was young, he had a mix of toys made from plastic and wood. When I was a kid, they were mostly plastic action figures with bendable joints, and nowadays, modern toys usually contain a lot of electronic components as well, even when they're not straight-up electronic devices like video games. However, the essential nature of what a toy is is still the same. The very first definition of toy, which is listed in its page at merriamwebster.com, says, Something for a child to play with. So if there are children in heaven, and if there is play, there will be toys of some sort. What sort? A most perfect sort, since everything is perfected in heaven due to the presence of God. So all that's left to do is show that children play in heaven, and there are at least two good indications of this to be found in the Bible. Let's take a look. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall thrust his hand into the den of the basilisk. Isaiah 11, 8 And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Zechariah 8, 5 So all of this is a pretty strong indication that there will be both children and play in heaven, and therefore toys and games as well. And if children get to play there, it would seem odd that adults wouldn't have the chance to do so as well, given that they have eternity before them. Now, some might say in response to this that there's definitely work in heaven, and we know this. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Because thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will place thee over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Matthew twenty five twenty three meaning that people may have managerial roles in heaven if they've been faithful, which is a type of service, as it says in Revelation. And there shall be no curse any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. Revelation 22, 3 Nevertheless, we have every reason to think that service and work in heaven will be pleasant and enjoyable, rather than empty, futile drudgery, as it often is in this life, because of the following. And to Adam he said, Because, because thou, thou hast hearkened, hearkened to the voice of thy wife, wife and hast eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat, cursed is the earth in thy work. With labor and toil shalt thou eat thereof all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.17 So we know that the difficulties of work, as well as its relative futility, are as a result of the fall, not meant to be present in heavenly tasks. In short, work would be more like play, enjoyable and fun, but also good because it has a meaningful purpose to it, which play doesn't always have. Next time, an issue that's much more important, what should we do when there's a crisis in the church? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.